When I heard that Olympus were bringing out a Mark III version of their EM5, I hoped it would be bigger than the Mark II. It's not something I'd normally wish for, but I'd found the Mark II body area too cramped and crowded. I bought a battery grip to up the real estate and ease the problem. The battery grip duplicates the shutter release and front dial, tragically not only looking ugly, but making the originals redundant. I managed to rise above such aesthetic atrocities, however, and did not let it affect my art. Now, four years later, here's the Mark III. Problem solved. It's a model of how to stick to micro four-thirds size with DSLR-like controllability. There are two essential changes that differentiate the Mark III from the Mark II for me. The first is the adoption of phase detection autofocus, and the second is the adoption of all plastic construction. There are myriad other improvements like 20 megapixel instead of 16 megapixel sensor, 4K video, faster continuous shooting, a higher res high res mode and improved stabilization. There is also better EVF viewing for spectacle wearers. All the updates are well worth having and bring the M5 up to the latest micro four third specs. They only make a difference at the outer margins of performance though, and in routine use the Mark III will behave and perform much like its predecessor. That is not damning with faint praise, it's the same for all current cameras now technology is progressing inch by inch, rather than leaps and bounds. The changes to the control layout are all for the better as far as I'm concerned, and I'd be hard pushed to think of any way to improve the ergonomics. Certainly there's little need for the accessory grip now. The right hand thumb and finger grip place the hand in the optimum position for control access while providing a rock steady grip on the camera. There's the expected fully articulated rear screen and the electronic viewfinder is now organic LED which gives a more punchy image to view. For full right photographers like me it's something of a luxury to have an EVF with eye relief that allows me to view all four corners of the screen without pressing my glasses right up against it. It's little things like this that make a camera attractive to use. The EVF appears slightly small by comparison with some other Micro Four Thirds models, but you'd never notice if it's in a side-by-side -side comparison. It's a decent EVF. In use, the camera feels light in the hand, a bit flimsy compared to its Panasonic competitors, or the M10 Mark II, especially with the monitor hinged out to the side. Since the Panasonics and the M10 have a metal frame where the Olympus is all plastic, I can only conclude that it is the metal that makes the difference. The word plastic is a bit pejorative too. Modern plastics are tough and forgiving of drops and knocks, and I have no reason to think that the little Olympus is less tough than any other Micro Four Thirds camera. It's weather sealed of course, so will pair with the Olympus Pro lenses nicely for the outdoor and sporting photographer community. The flash sync socket is gone, which is a shame, but a cheap adapter will give you the same thing via the hot shoe. What a bonus nowadays is the little FL LM3 flash, especially with its ability to act as a wireless trigger for external flashes. Battery life remains the same as the Mark II, nothing to write home about, but out and about without flash I get at least a thousand shots, and spares are hardly a burden. Video is now up to modern standards, with 4K on tap, up to 30 frames per second. For a wish list, I'd like to be able to assign a sound to the electronic shutter. The lack of audio confirmation that the shutter has fired makes me uneasy, so where on Panasonic's I use the e-shutter by default, with Olympus I use the mechanical one. It's a shame because there's very little jello effect with the Olympus electronic shutter. The addition of Pro Capture will be useful for some with its ability to pre-capture up to 14 frames, providing you know roughly where the subject will be since there's no CAF with it. Great for birds coming and going from the nest, for example, with its 30 frames per second. For me, the ability to capture 6 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, avoiding all possibility of lateral distortion with full autofocus and exposure is the thing. It's fast enough not to miss any action, but doesn't give you hundreds of frames to wade through and agonise over in editing. Which brings me to the unique selling point of the M5 Mark III. Phase detection focusing in a mid-range Micro Four Thirds camera where contrast detection has been the norm until now. Is it better? For single shot AF it makes no difference. As with Panasonic's contrast and depth from defocus method, focus acquisition is essentially instantaneous. For continuous autofocus, yes it is better. I need to state my position here. As I see it, there are two aspects to continuous autofocus. 
First, identifying the subject to be focused on. Second, keeping the focus on that subject. Using the all target or 25 grid is making yourself hostage to fortune. The camera can't read your mind. Single and small target are a little too demanding for a fast moving subject. Five target works really well. And since I knew I would get an uninterrupted view of my subject, I set the CAF sensitivity to high and stabilization off. The results were remarkable. With the 40 to 150 Pro Zoom set at f4 and 100 mm, I shot sequence after sequence focusing on the number plates of these cars. They were travelling at 50 to 60 miles per hour, initially towards and at an angle to me, then virtually across my path. Of 1,575 frames, 30 were off focus. That is a 1.9% failure rate. I did the same test with a Panasonic G90 and from 1,731 frames got a failure rate of 7.6%. Notably, the Panasonic took longer to pick up and log on to the target, was much more prone to losing focus. When it did lose focus, it often took it three or more frames to find its feet. The Olympus generally corrected itself for the next frame to be sharp. The Panasonic would go wildly off focus where the Olympus would go a bit off. And in reality, since I judged all the frames at what 100%, many of the few failures there would be usable at normal sizes. The Olympus acquitted itself well in the straight on and weaving bicycle shots here too, as you can see. For video, the M53's PDAF seems a touch more certain, but it and the G90 are more evenly matched in this mode. You could go on testing forever, but the camera's excellent continuous autofocus ability is established as far as I am concerned. Equally as far as I'm concerned, the decision as to where to apply that phase detection is one for the photographer, not the camera. It's not that hard to keep the 5 grid roughly on target, and so simply eliminate the possibility of focus slipping to the background. Performance otherwise is as you'd expect. Olympus say the new JPEG processing engine has improved high ISO performance. But to me, raw performance looks much the same as any 20 megapixel micro for a third sensor. So any advance in noise could only be at the expense of detail, or vice versa. No one has a magic wand here. I'll start summing up with a list of gripes. The menu system is still too dense and quirky, using odd icons with simple words would be so much more efficient. The fiddly micro USB socket, really? Why not the now standard C socket? It reminds me of car makers still installing CD players in cars years after we stop using them. And while you can charge the battery in the body, the camera can't operate while plugged in because it thinks it's attached to storage. And why no user configurable menu section? Rant over. The M5 Mark III squares a circle by being tiny yet feeling spacious like a full-size DSLR. It's a pleasure to use while being a very serious tool indeed. It is the best overall expression of Micro Four Thirds philosophy so far. And that makes me feel a bit teed off at Olympus for spoiling it for a hapeth of tar. I put a lot of store on the feel of a camera, and this one doesn't feel like a thousand pounds. The Mark II did. At this price, it really ought to have a metal body, even if only for owner satisfaction. With that, it would have been near perfect. Life's not like that, though. There's always something. Thanks for watching.